In this example, we've been given some different information and the variables that we're going to be calculating have changed. So in this example, we're specifying that we want a force on extension of 145 kilonewtons. So here we have a particular requirement for the force on the extension stroke. We have the same system pressure, but we've also been given something called the stroke length. Now in this scenario, we're assuming that the cylinder needs to fully extend in a given time period of 0.25 seconds. So by full extension, what we're referring to is the stroke length of the cylinder or the length of the piston rod that's exposed after full extension. Another way of thinking of stroke length is it's the position of the piston rod before extension when compared to the length of the piston rod after extension. So in effect, it's how far the piston or the cylinder is capable of extending. So first of all, we're going to need to calculate the size or more specifically the diameter of the piston body and piston head in our cylinder. And then we're going to need to calculate how quickly the oil needs to flow into the cylinder in order to achieve our extension requirements. So let's start by calculating the size of our cylinder. Now, once again, we're going to start with the same formula which states that pressure equals force over area. Now we know the pressure in the system, 45 megapascals, and we know our desired force for extension. So what we need to calculate first of all is the area of our cylinder. Now in this example, what we're going to be calculating is the full bore area. And the reason it's the full bore area is because we're only interested in the force during extension. So rearranging that equation, we get area is force over pressure. So now we can calculate our full bore area. And our full bore area is the force, 145 kilonewtons. Note that it's kilonewtons, so 145 times 10 to the 3, divided by our pressure of 45 megapascals. Again, it's megapascals, so 10 to the 6, giving us an area of the full bore or an area of the piston head equal to 0 0.00322 recurring meters squared. Now I'm going to leave that area in meters squared for the time being, because then I won't need to convert it later in order to get into SI units. So now we know the area of the full ball, and it just so happens that the area of the full ball is equal to the area of the piston head. Now the area of the piston head we can write as a formula. We can write area of piston head equals pi times radius of piston head squared. We know the desired area of our piston head to achieve our force requirements and pi is just a constant. So the thing that we need to find here is the radius of the piston head. Now the first step to getting the radius of the piston head on its own is to divide each side by pi. So we'll get RH squared equals AH divided by pi. Now the last step to get RH on its own is to square root each side. So what we actually get is RH, the radius of the piston head, equals the square root of the area of the piston head divided by pi. And we have some numbers that we can input. That's the square root of 0 0.00322 divided by pi. Note that it's the square root of 0 0.00322 divided by pi. So we can put brackets around that. Now we can calculate the radius of our piston head and our radius is going to come out in meters because our area is in meters squared and we get an answer of 0 0.032 meters. Now the bore of a cylinder is normally expressed as a diameter. So what we can do is multiply that by two in order to get the diameter of our piston head. Well, the diameter of our piston head then is just 0.064 meters. And we may prefer to express that in millimeters as our final answer. So multiplying by a thousand gives us 64 millimeters. 
So let's add the diameter of our piston head to our list of variables, and then we're going to calculate the mass flow rate of oil into our cylinder. So we have diameter of piston head equals 64 millimeters. Okay, so let's clear some space. Now we know from earlier tutorials that we can calculate something called volume flow rate using the formula cross-sectional area times velocity. And we had an extension to that formula for calculating mass flow rate, where mass flow rate was density times volume flow rate. The reason for that is because mass is density times volume. But let's simplify this one step further then. Mass flow rate equals density and substituting volume flow rate, we get rho AV. Rho is density, A is the area, and V is the velocity. So let's take each of those things in turn. When we talk about the velocity, what we're talking about is the velocity of extension of our cylinder. But hopefully you can visualize if the end of the piston rod is extending at velocity v, then the piston head is also moving forward at the same velocity v. They're connected together, so they're moving at the same velocity. So we're going to calculate the velocity of the end of the piston rod, and then we're going to apply that velocity of the piston head to see how much mass of oil needs to flow into the cylinder every second. Now velocity is calculated by doing length over time or distance over time. And we have that information because we have a stroke length of 120 millimeters and we have an extension time of 0.25 seconds. We need to convert the length to meters, so 0.12. And the time is already in seconds, 0.25. Therefore, the velocity at the tip of the piston rod as the cylinder extends is going to be 0.48 meters per second. Now we have everything we need to calculate the mass flow rate of oil into the cylinder because we know the density of oil. We know the area of the cylinder or the bore of the cylinder from an earlier calculation. And now we know the velocity of extension. We just need to take care to work in SI units. So mass flow rate equals density, 900, that's already in kilograms per meter cubed, times area. Well, the area that we calculated earlier was expressed in meters squared, 0 0.00322. And we've calculated our velocity as 0.48. Therefore, the mass flow rate of the oil, or the rate at which oil needs to flow into the back of our cylinder, equals 1.392 kilograms every second. So we now know that every single second, 1.392 kilograms of oil needs to flow into the back of our cylinder in order for our cylinder to extend with a velocity of 0.48 meters per second. Now the reason why information like that's important is because pumps are often sized based on the volume flow rate or the mass flow rate of oil that they can deliver. If we're able to determine our system requirements, then we'll be able to select components that are able to fulfill those requirements. So we've calculated the size of cylinder required to fulfill our false requirements and then we've determined the mass flow rate so that we can select a suitable pump for that application.